we have successfully used AI agents to create a tic-tac-toe game that we can start playing around with on our computer. Can we use AI agents to help us code out software? Abacus AI has released a new IDE called Code LLM, and we're gonna check it out today. The objective is very simple. Does it work? Is it good? Let's find out. Welcome back, y'all. Today's video is sponsored by Abacus AI, and they hit me up and they were like, Corbin, we got a cool new IDE. We want you to check it out. I was like, okay, what's it about? And this is Code LLM. What's really cool about this is that we can integrate the AI chatbot workflow within our coding environment. So if you are a developer that likes to have your AI and IDE integrated in the same workflow, today is the video for you. So let's go ahead and get started. I want you to think of Abacus AI as an entire ecosystem. So they already have a ton of stuff going on on the website itself. So I'll make sure I leave that in the description description down below. But in today's video, we're just going to be focusing on code LLM. But as you see above me, obviously we can do stuff like chat with their chat bots, code out stuff here, draw a dragon, draw a dragon Corbin. Yes, quite literally draw a dragon. Pretty cool. For now, let's just download. So I'm going to hit code LLM. Here are the options, which are nice. We can either download from Mac, Linux, or Windows. I'm gonna download from Mac and get going here. So once we download and we open, we get this nice little walkthrough. So let's go ahead and go through it real quick. I'm gonna log in to my Abacus account here, hit login, and there we go. We're good there. And then it's gonna go over all the really cool stuff that it can do within its platform. This one's pretty cool here, as this is kind of like when you're doing a Google search, essentially whatever you're typing, we can hit tab and it will auto-complete a suggestion. And one of the big selling points here is our ability to actually chat with the code, get real answers, and apply that to our code. Code. And what I personally really love is the ability to actually upload an image and then get front end code. So we're going to see that feature in today's video as well. We're going to mark as done. And let's get going. Let's go ahead and try this out. See if this code editor is any good. Let's start off by opening up our terminal window as today we are going to be creating a React based app. Get that nice little React front end we always love with the objective of creating a very, very well known game. What game, Corbin? We're talking about Tic Tac to the toe, tic-tac-toe. Let's see if this can code it out. Assuming I have no experience how to code, this is the first major advantage of using the code LLM. I can come up here to chat and I can choose which model I like. So we have options between O3 Mini High, which is one of the newest models that's really cool. Deep Seek, I know there's been a lot of love there. We can also use their AI model of code LLM. Let's check it out. I'm simply going to ask, okay, I want to create a new folder so I can start my React app. How do I do this in terminal? Hit enter. The chat feature is very much like another software engineer on your team, ready to go, asking the question. What's really cool here is that it's giving me the command line of mkdir my React app, and then we're going to navigate to it, and then we're going to go ahead and create a React app. But let's say I don't like the name my React app, as it's a little too basic. I'm not basic, okay? Let's go ahead and rename this to like Tic Tac Awesome. And to do that, it's actually very simple. We just simply ask, right? We're gonna do, let's rename this folder to Tic Tac Awesome and enter again. This kind of ask and answer flow is fundamental to any form of education, but is also very extremely helpful in the context of coding. So here we go. We got MKDIR Tic Tac Awesome. If you're like, Corey, what does that mean? What are we doing? That's just creating a new folder. It's like the same as going on your desktop, hitting right click, new folder. I know you're just like, why do, why do developers make everything so complex? Don't worry. Once you do it once, you'll do it once. So I'm gonna do that, MKDIR Tic Tac Awesome. I'm gonna hit enter here and that will create the folder. Now we actually have to navigate into that folder so we can actually push some code into there. So I'm gonna just follow what code LLM told me, which is just copy this. This is CD and then the folder name. Now we're inside it. And then the next step here, so we can kind of see it right here within the IDE is we're gonna open this folder. From our little command list here, we're just gonna hit Command O. Simply find the exact folder we just created. It's gonna be that name. And then we're gonna get this. It's going to ask me, do I trust the author that created this folder? Well, I created the folder and I do trust myself. So I'm gonna say, trust the author. Yes, I trust the author. To know whether or not we're actually in that folder, come up here to the top left and you should see the folder name. What you'll also notice, which is really helpful, is that it will start categorizing different chats we have with Code LLM. Now, specifically, this idea of creating a new folder, I can click this and go back into that chat. So because I wasn't done yet and this is teaching me how to create this React app, let's come back up here and do the next line. So we're in our folder here. Nice. I'm gonna exit out of this welcome. I'm gonna reopen my terminal window here. Click this terminal. And it looks like the next line we want to do is going to be MPX create react app. I'm going to copy this. Okay. Paste it. And notice that we are inside Tic Tac Awesome, as this is where we're going to want to build our react app here, all provided by Code LM here. Hit enter. And let's do it. Once it's done installing, you'll notice all these relevant files up here. Pretty nice. What's really cool is that let's say you get to this point and you're just like, what the heck even is a React app? We can still leverage this chat feature here and just simply ask that. By simply putting in, what is a React app? What did I just create? Hit enter here. This is where that flow really incurs. So scrolling down here, we can get everything, right? So what is the public folder? What is going on there? 
contains static files like the HTML file and the fav icon, like the little web browsing fav icon. What's the source? Contains your React component styles and other source files. If I scroll up here, it just gives me a real brief definition of what's going on. A React app is a web application using the React library, which is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. If you don't know what a user interface is, that's literally what you're watching YouTube on. This is all UI. UI, UI, UI. UI, E, I, O. I know you know that song. <laughs> React allows you to create reusable UI components and manage the state of your application organized in an efficient way. Let's see some coding. Let's see if CodeLM excels in this context. Before we do that, let's go ahead and render this React app so we can see this in a live web browser. To do that, we're going to simply do npm start, which CodeLM pointed out early on. npm start, enter. So once we do that, we got an error. And I'm actually glad we got an error because we're going to be able to leverage our chat here to help us out. So I'm going to create a new chat. Let me show you the workflow when dealing with an IDE with an AI integrated into it. So we got our error here. For some reason, I can't find something. You're like, I don't know what any of this means, Corbin. Don't worry. All you need to do is simply copy all of this. Copy all of it. All of it. All of it. With our chat here, I'm going to simply paste it. So we'll go ahead and say, when I do NPM start, paste the entire error code. How do I fix? Hit enter. So first it's telling me to go to my relevant directory. But as we already know, when we're in an IDE like this, all we need to do is simply hit new terminal. And then once we're in a new terminal and you see your project name here, you're good to go. Now the specific situation we ran into was there was a specific dependency that wasn't installed. The next question might be is Corbin, what the heck is a dependency? Well, one, we could ask the chat, but in theory, just think of a dependency as different features that we can have within a web application slash software. Really good example of this is if you're familiar with Stripe, Stripe would be a dependency that we would install in our web app. For now though, we're gonna simply copy, do exactly what it tells us and we're gonna paste. I'm gonna hit enter. So far, so good. Let's see if it works. And there we go. If you run into errors, we can leverage Code LLM's chat feature to help solve them. As I'm pretty sure you and me can agree when coding, we are almost 100% going to run into errors. Basically, the odds of running into an error while coding is the same as the sunrise and the sunset. It's going to happen, but maybe like won't happen in billions of years from now, but we don't talk about that. Let's write some code. So we're gonna come over here to app.js. What is the app.js? This is where we render live environments for the front end. That's why you see edit source app.js and save to reload here. And you also see it right here. It's very simple idea being coffee as that's what I'm drinking right now. Command save coffee. So now that we have this though, and now we understand the implementation of rendering in the actual underlying code, let's use the agent. With the agent selected here, we can actually leverage a nice little shorthand that code LLM has. By command A, you will notice if we hit command I here, we can just ask directly what we want to change on the code. So as you already know, by the project name, we're doing tic-tac, awesome. So let's make a tic-tac-toe game. I'm gonna simply say, I wanna change all of this. Please make a tic-tac-toe game that can be played one human, one bot, output all code, go. When we hit enter there, it's going to create a bunch of code here, as you can see. And then the first major thing for you to identify is that all the code that's in red, this is being deleted. I read this in, or probably just Tusk, because this is gone. The green is the new code coming in, and the red, again, as I said, is just bye-bye code. So because I like this, I'm playing tic-tac-toe, I'm gonna hit accept. I'm gonna save. So as I just showed right there, that's one way of approaching coding within code LLM. But here's another way. Let's just ask for the entire output of these files. We're gonna say, give me the new app.js and app.css. Want to play tic-tac-toe, output the entire code file. Enter. This agent feature is very much the feature you want to use for bigger code changes. So as you'll notice, it went ahead and updated my CSS here. Let's check it out. There we go. Not bad. This only took a couple seconds here and we're able to render an entire tic-tac-toe game. For example, click here, X, O. X, O. X, O. Okay, X wins. So as of now, we'll just do human versus human as we always loved that, so I'll play against myself. I know that sounds a little sad, but I'll play against myself, okay? It's kind of like uh, those people you see in the park playing chess against himself. I'm gonna do that against myself, okay? But here is another cool thing, as you'll notice with this UI. Well, first off, it's just awesome that we got it this fast, and it was able to understand what a winner is in tic-tac-toe, where it's a complete straight reset game. But let's go ahead and take this one step further here and leverage that attach image feature. And I really like doing this in front end development. So what I mean by this is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and attach an image to reference we want the new UI to look like. So I'm going to create a new chat here and we're going to use this image upload. Find a website you really like when it comes to user interface and this is how we're gonna do it. So I'm in Stripe here. And let's just say we really like this color hue and the color palette here. I'm gonna simply screenshot this. Coming back over to our chat here, I'm gonna upload. I'm simply gonna say for app.css, can we make our UI look more like the attached image? 
hit enter. And just for crossing our T's and dotting our I's, I'll provide the code as well. So we can get that entire output and we're looking good here. Now with the code output being done there, we're gonna paste to our CSS. Okay, here we go. Pasted it over, there we go. Notice how it took like the purple hue from Stripe UI. And overall, this looks very much more like a Stripe type of situation. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Now, once we have this code all put out here, we can just go ahead and show off one more feature here. Use the chat feature. This is your education. This is like the software engineer that's just kind of sitting there. Yo, 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 what's going on here? Ask it. The agent's more of like, let's produce and get some code cooking. So let's try this again. What we can do here is now I can select specific parts of the code and simply do that same workflow of command I. This makes it so that if we don't necessarily wanna change an entire code file and maybe certain sectors of it, it's a lot easier. So if I go to the return here, grab this, command I, I could be like, I'm gonna say, let's make this tic-tac-toe game bigger. Let's do it. So to win, I need four in a row, enter. And we got our changes here. We can always reject if we don't like it, hit accept, save, and there we go. We got our four by four game. I didn't have to change one little thing here just because now we're dealing with four rows instead of three out of the four there, but we are good to go. Now we can play tic-tac-toe four in a row. Let's see if we can get it. Okay, maybe not this game. <laughs> okay, try this. There we go. We made it so it happened. We have successfully used AI agents to create a tic-tac-toe game that we can start playing around with on our computer. That concludes today's video. If you felt like you learned something, make sure to leave a like for all the likes. I'll see you in the next video. Code LLM. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.